as, you, as a lot of parents know, the, the coaches help out a lot. They're the freshman coach, the JV coach. Um, you know, they're, Tyler Walter is my assistant coach. Um, there's a lot that they do that a lot of the parents or kids don't realize what they're doing on behind the scenes too, uh, at practices, uh, drawing up plays, things of that nature to make you guys better and to help me out. So uh, I did lean on them a lot uh, this year more than years past, just because we had some uh, really nice players this year and want to put them in the best position possible. So um, with uh, Mike Carr coming to the program, it was a nice addition to the, to the program, give us some, uh, help me see things that I don't, didn't see in the past, just because it's a different viewpoint. Uh, Jimmy and I have coached many years together. We're kind of on the same page, and it's always nice to have someone on the outside kind of give me another sight on what's going on and, and seeing things that I didn't see in the past uh, and to help them get better. So um, I want to thank you guys a lot, not, just not for uh, being one of the coaches, but help me out on uh, many different levels. So thank you, all three of you. Um, Tyler Walters is the one sitting in the corner. He's our, our handsome young guy we just keep in the corner. <laughs> um, anyway, so I want to talk about our season briefly. Um, we had a, a, all seven of my, the, the top scorers, the top seven guys came back from last year's team. So uh, it was very familiar for these guys stepping on the floor the very first game. Uh, last year, we uh, finished the season with only six wins. Um, you know, it wasn't the best season we had, but a lot of these guys were getting major playing time now, and, and the CVC is tough. It's not an easy conference. Um, so night in, night out, we're not playing against, uh, as I call them, cupcake teams, where they just can go in there and you can go out and beat them by 30 or 40 points. We had to come out and play every night. And this season definitely showed for it. Uh, this year we finished 12 and 12. Um, we were six and eight uh, with our league record. I think we finished in four, tied for fourth in our conference. Um, and I'll allude to a few things of, of who we played against and what we did against them. Uh, we started off the season by losing our first four games. Uh, one loss was to Hawken by three, and another one was lost to Independence, which is an overtime game. Um, we competed in all the games we played in the first four games, even though the first couple we had been a couple, uh, we lost by 15, I think, in each of the first two games. Um, but that's just part of it was myself not having ever prepared, and the part is just beginning the season. And we're trying to figure things out. It's always I tell people it takes about seven or eight games before the team gets their uh, feel for what they're doing and what position they're playing, what their jobs are, their roles are, and everything. Even though we did play the year before that, guys' skill sets have changed from what they did in the summertime uh, and what they did um, uh, from practice and the scrimmages and stuff too. So things do change from the year before. Um, after that, we rattled off uh, four wins. Uh, three of them uh, were good competitive games. Uh, the fourth one that finished off that four-game win streak uh, we played against Berkshire. Um, we hadn't beat them since, uh, I think, Jake de Blasio's class. I think that's what it was, which was in 14. So it had been at least four years or four or five years since we beat Berkshire even in one game. Um, so it's a nice feeling we were able to beat them for that game to get us back to a 500 record. Um, in fact, we beat them both times we played them this year as Coach Luke to the JV team as well. So it's a nice little feather in the cap for, for the guys. Uh, what you want to do, look at your season and you know, my big thing, I always say I want to beat Berkshire twice. Uh, I want to win our conference, and I want to win a minimum of two to three playoff games. That's the goals of what we set for these kids at the beginning of the year. Do you achieve all of them all the time? No, but you got to set the bar up high so you can achieve things in life. So that's what we're trying to do for these kids is put that bar up there, and hopefully we can achieve them. And so uh, after that span, we went back to 500. Then we started our league play. And as I said, our league was tough. Uh, we went in a span after that. We won two games. And we lost eight in that span. So it was a little peaks and valleys for us. And we were in, uh, definitely in a valley at that time. But the kids were playing well. We just weren't winning the games. So it wasn't for lack of effort uh, or anything like that. We just played against some tough teams. Um, in our league, they had, we had five teams in the valley make the sectional championship game. And Calga Heights actually played for the district championship. And we actually we beat uh, Calga Heights one time as well. So just to give you an idea, we weren't playing against teams that were lucky to get in the playoffs. And they just got blown up by 20 or 30 points. Uh, these teams were actually winning games too. Uh, so it says a lot about our kids and what they were able to do this year. I think we started playing our, our best game of basketball uh, late in the season. Uh, once the calendar rolled over February, February, we won five out of six games. That's not even including the playoffs games. Um, we were kind of hitting stride in, in playing the best basketball, which is as a coach, what you want your kids to be doing is playing their best basketball late in the season, because that means that they're just, they're in tune and the opportunities are there coming to the postseason. Um, we received a fifth seed draw in the tournament, and we hosted Brookfield. 
Uh, this was the first time we hosted the games, the same time we beat Burton was back then in 2014. Uh, it was an exciting, exciting time for our program. It was nice to give these kids the opportunity to play an extra game, but also play at home. Uh, it's nice to play, fun to play in front of your family and, and your fans and stuff in your own environment. Um, a little bit closer, uh, I shouldn't say a little closer than I thought it was me. It's a good team. They didn't win a lot of games, but at the end of the season, they were the same thing as us. They were clicking. I think they won the last four to five games before they played against us. Um, so we had a, a little nail biter there. We won 69-68 uh, with a few nice defensive plays at the end of the game uh, to advance to the sectional championship game uh, to play against the four seed Garrettsville. Uh, we beat Garrettsville earlier in the year. That was the first game of our, our four game win streak. We played them at home, we beat them. Uh, and I know the guys are feeling pretty good about it. You know, playing against them, you know we're gonna play them at their place. Um, but they were a tough team. It's a different environment playing them over there. Um, we just came up short. We lost in overtime with the 57-55 loss. Uh, and unfortunately, in, in high school basketball, there's only four teams that go out at the end of the season with a win. And uh, Coach, Carr, Coach Carr pointed out to everybody after our, our last game we lost and said, everyone's got to lose except for four teams, Division One, Two, Three, and Four. Those are the only guys that end the season with a W. Uh, so unfortunately, we lost. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of these kids. Uh, as, as hard as they played, the work they put in through the, uh, all the years they've been playing here, especially seniors, um, and this way they conducted themselves at the games, after the games. You know, it's not like there's kids after the game yelling at referees or acting up or complaining to their parents on the sideline or anything like that. They're actually just out here ready to play. We win, we win, we lose, we lose. We keep our heads up and we get better the next day. So I want to I want to thank the guys for just conducting themselves in a, I call it a professional manner. Uh, first off, uh, he's not here tonight. Uh, driver's training class. I understand that. Been through that a few times. Um, it was uh, Austin Miller. Austin Miller dressed for us. He played JV, but he dressed for us uh, on the varsity team. Practiced with me every single night. Whenever we broke up into groups, he was down with us the whole time. Uh, Austin uh, is a really hard worker. He uh, tried to make the guys better that he played against. I know some of the guys get frustrated with him because he would go a little too hard in, in practice and knock him down and, and things of that nature. But uh, I think it was good. It was all good-hearted, and but sometimes we leave a little bit of bloody lips and things of that nature. But. Uh, like I said, I think he made us better. Uh, he was a great kid to have practice with us every single day. Uh, he, unfortunately, he didn't have enough quarters to qualify for uh, a letter, um, but it's definitely wanted to make a point of, of noting that he did uh, do a lot of good things for our program and for the varsity team. So uh, I want to recognize Austin Miller. <laughs> My boy Dave Brown's not here, right? Okay. <laughs> So I'll talk about him briefly. Dave Brown is a senior. Dave Brown was in our program for uh, four years. Um, stuck it out this year uh, in, in the offseason from junior to senior year. Uh, got in the weight room, got himself in shape, and was ready to play this year. Uh, unfortunately, with having seven guys coming back that played a lot of minutes last year, uh, the opportunities weren't there as much as uh, I know he would like. Um, so he was unfortunate that he didn't get tons of playing time. Uh, Dave's a, a great kid. I've coached him since he was in second grade, I think, in, in football all the way up. Um, very fun guy. Everybody loved him on the team. He was a light heart on the team. Uh, joked a lot, screwed around a lot. Didn't bother me that much as far as what he would do because he just was always light hearted and everybody knew how Dave was. But he was a great person to have on the team. And I think that he did come out this year. I wish he'd been here because you know, it was a little easier to tell him how much he appreciates someone that didn't get to play a lot when they're here. So I uh, hope you guys will let him know that I did appreciate him being here on our team this year. And I know you guys did as well. So thanks, David Brown.